Hey, it's Chris. The other day, I reached out on Twitter and I asked you guys, what video do you want me to make next? And overwhelmingly, the answer was a video about shortcuts, formerly Siri shortcuts, formerly workflow. All right, cool. So I reached out again and I asked, well, what about shortcuts specifically do you really wanna know about? And there's basically two answers. Number one, you just wanted some tips, some ideas, some actual shortcuts that you can take and use right away. And number two, there was a big group of people that really didn't understand how shortcuts could number one, be useful to them, or number two, how shortcuts could fit into their lives slash how they could make a custom shortcut for the stuff that they want to do. So this video, is my attempt at answering all those questions and making something useful. All right, we're gonna start with some tips, some stuff you can just pick up and use right away. And I got my buddy Renee here with the first tip for you guys. So take it away, Renee. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is an idea I'm just flat out stealing from the brilliant, brilliant Matthew Casanelli. And it's not just the idea, I'm stealing the whole thing. Matthew was kind enough to collab with me on this last week. So this is like a collab inside a collab, just collab all the way down until Chris yells kick, but I'm just gonna get to it. See, you take the iOS 14 widget for an app and you put it on your iPhone homepage or iPad sidebar because still locked to the sidebar and iPad. And then you stack the shortcuts for that app right behind it. That way you always have the shortcuts for an app just one swipe behind the data for that app. Yeah, brilliant, right? And I'd say that even if Matthew hadn't also made me a custom shortcut that just triggers the Imperial March whenever I walk into my studio. Thanks, Chris. All right, cool, Renee. <laughs> However you came by your information, that's totally legit and it works in this video. Next up, I got my buddy Christopher Lolly, whose content you should definitely check out if you haven't already, but here's the next tip. So for my tip, it's all about HomeKit and making better shortcuts and better logic when it comes to controlling lights. So the first action we're gonna need is an if action. So what we normally do would put a variable right here for the input, but instead I'm just gonna tap in here and use one of the built-in ones. We're gonna hit select home accessory. And for this shortcut, I'm gonna do the studio backlight. This is light right back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. And we're gonna set, leave it to is on, but there is a few other options. You could say outlet is in use, not in use, is on and is off. So we're gonna leave it to is on. And then we're gonna come over here to search and then we're gonna do control home. And then we're gonna pick that same light, so studio backlight. And since the logic says is on, we're gonna set it to is off. And then we're gonna do home control again. And then we're gonna do studio backlight is on. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to see if the light is on. If the light is on, it'll set it to off. If it is on, then it'll set it to uh, off. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see that light turned off back there. And let's go ahead and run it one more time. Now it's back on. Off. On. This is just really simple logic in shortcuts you can use to make controlling home devices a lot better. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate you sharing that. Definitely in depth. People can appreciate it. So now I'm going to share a couple of my tips, starting with something that's been very buzzed about since iOS 14 came out, the beta. And that is the ability to triple tap the back of your iPhone in order to launch Google Assistant. Did you catch that? Let's do it one more time just so you can see. Triple tap and I set the shortcut to launch Google Assistant. So this is an accessibility feature. You can set this shortcut to be whatever you want. It doesn't have to launch Google Assistant, but a lot of people are liking this as an alternative to having to use Siri and making Google Assistant really easy to get to. All right, so in order to get this working, you gotta be running iOS 14, either the beta now or the full thing later, depending on when you're watching this. Then you wanna go in and download the Google Assistant app, which I've already done and then just log into your account. And once you log in, as you're going through the setup, it's gonna ask you if you wanna create a shortcut and you just wanna say yes. Then you launch the shortcuts app, find your Google Assistant shortcut, and then tap on those three dots for the options. And then what you wanna do is turn off the show when run option. And then it's not gonna pop up every time that it runs, which is key to making this work really smoothly. Then you wanna get into your settings and hit accessibility and then get into touch. 
Then scroll all the way down to the bottom and then you'll see back tap. And this is where you can either set a double tap or a triple tap shortcut. Now there's all kinds of options here. I'm gonna scroll down, there's accessibility, scroll gestures, and then a whole section with shortcuts. And then click on the Google Assistant shortcut. That's it. So now I can triple tap and launch Google Assistant. I love doing it, it seems like such a hack. So anyways, this is a great way to expand what you can do with shortcuts and be able to access it really quickly without even having to look at a screen or even say anything. All right, now you might be wondering, why do I have my iPad out here with this mouse? Well, it's because one of my favorite Siri shortcuts has to do with using a mouse with iPad OS. More specifically, you can actually set the scroll wheel here to activate a Siri shortcut of your choosing, which is pretty cool. I've been using this for all kinds of different things. My favorite thing to do with it is to activate a playlist. <laughs> I guess it would help if I turned it on, right? Let's try this again. My favorite thing to do with it is to activate a playlist. Okay. So in order to have this set up, you have to activate assistive touch. So in order to get this working, you have to number one, pair a mouse with the scroll wheel and then activate assistive touch, which is also an accessibility feature. So get into settings, go into accessibility, touch, and then assistive touch, scroll down here to where it says devices, tap on that, tap on your mouse. Mine is the Pebble i345, which I'll make sure to link down in the description for you because it's a great mouse for the iPad. And then here you can customize that third button. By the way, you can do all kinds of stuff. It doesn't have to be Siri shortcuts. You can activate the app switcher, for instance, which looks like this. But I'm gonna scroll down here to my shortcuts. Oh, look at this. Now that I set it up, I can use my Google Assistant with the press of a button here too. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But I'm just gonna select Catch This Wave, which is one of my favorite playlists that I curate and I'll link that up down in the description too because people keep asking, what's that playlist, what's that playlist? Now you can do this same shortcut with the same playlist. And really it's as simple as that. One other thing I've been testing though is new tweet. So if I wanna go from idea to tweet that much faster, I can just tap the button and say run that shortcut and there I am in Twitter and I'm tweeting. And people are gonna be like, duh, when I send this, but I just sent that live on this video for you, right? Social proof, either proof or it didn't happen. It just happened. So anyways, there's a couple of tips from some friends and from myself for some shortcut stuff that you can dig into and use right away, should be kind of practical. But I think the best tip that I could give you is a technique, something that I've been using as a way to uncover how shortcuts can fit into my workflow, me personally, instead of having to adapt what other people are doing or just what's in the shortcuts gallery in the official app. So what I highly recommend that you do is make a note. It could be on your iPad like I did or just on a piece of paper and kind of map out your routine for a typical day or even for a week. So what I did was I wrote down some of my weekly projects, applehype.com, curating that, finding some items to put in, my main channel videos here on the YouTube channel, podcast, which is now a video podcast, which you should be subscribed to. These videos are just turning into ads for all the things that I'm doing. Sorry about that. And then social media stuff. That's just some typical projects that I work on. Then I broke that down a little bit further. So for instance, for Apple Hype, for curating that website, I know that the apps that I use are Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R, -E -E Apple News, Twitter, Instapaper, Squarespace, Drafts, Notion, etc. So it's helpful to actually think about what apps I use because shortcuts, of course, can hook into all these apps. So I kind of mapped out that flow as well. When I get something interesting in Reader or Apple News or Twitter, then I store it into drafts and give it a tag. And from there, it heads over to Squarespace. It makes it onto the actual applehype.com website. And then after that, I store it in Notion so that I have an archive, a database of all the Apple Hype items. Okay, here's where the magic comes in. See these arrows here where I go from reader to drafts, drafts to Squarespace, etc. These black arrows, those are the junctures that represent good opportunities to find shortcuts or to create shortcuts that can assist me in this particular workflow. So whether that has to do with applying certain tags with the press of a button to stuff I'm putting in drafts or combining some drafts with the push of a button with a shortcut to make it easier to sift my stuff for Squarespace, for actually publishing it, or from getting it from Squarespace to Notion. These are the places where time can be saved. So what I think you should do is go in and map out 
what your week or day or workflows look like and where you get those arrows where information is being transferred from one app to another, that's where you can go in and create or find some shortcuts that can make your life easier. And I guess it doesn't have to be for work stuff either. You know, if you're just doing stuff around the house or chores or you wanna do home automation, you can just map out your processes and do the exact same thing. Because looking through the gallery here, that's fine, but what I feel like that is, is you kind of seeing how you can adapt to what Apple has preloaded this gallery with rather than making shortcuts adapt to you and how you would actually use them, which is the whole point. That's why they're there, to adapt all the Apple devices to your life. All right, but Chris, I'm not a programmer and this feels like programming and I just don't get how to make a custom shortcut myself. Even if I've identified the places where I could make some shortcuts that would make my life easier, how do I actually do it? Well, that could be the subject of a whole nother video, but I'm gonna point you in the right direction because Apple actually has a whole support guide, a shortcuts user guide with a big old table of contents here, but it's really well organized. They can take you through the shortcut basics, how to create custom shortcuts, how to edit and add your personal automation, your home automation. This is the place where I always tell people to start. All right, so just to end this video with the bang, I've got a few quick resources that you can go check out that's really just gonna up your game when it comes to serious shortcuts. The first is Routine Hub, which is routinehub.co, and it's just a directory that's curated, really well organized with a bunch of categories of different Siri shortcuts that people have made that you can download and use. And if you're looking for inspiration for shortcuts that you can create yourself, this is a great place to start. Secondly, check out Shortcuts Directory, which is shortcuts.directory. And here is just a hub of all kinds of information related to shortcuts. The next thing you gotta check out is called MFC Deck. And put simply, it widgetizes your shortcuts. Now that's kind of confusing because we got widgets in iOS 14. This is different than that. But basically, when you launch the Shortcuts app, all you see are those colored boxes. Well, this gives you more interesting boxes than just text boxes. Next thing that's pretty new, that's shortcut related, that you guys gotta check out is called Charty, which is great for data nerds because it's gonna let you create several different types of charts from directly within Siri shortcuts. Pretty unique. And then finally, I've already mentioned this in who knows how many videos, and I'm probably on applehype.com as well, but Pushcut is gonna give you triggers and notifications for your shortcuts and for home automation. But anyways, hopefully this video was helpful. If you guys want even more of a basic video, like a walkthrough of that Siri shortcuts guide that Apple made, uh, we can do that. I can go through and sort of teach you and learn together. So let me know if that's something that you're interested in or what other shortcut related content you guys are really itching to see. Otherwise, make sure to check out at Daily Tech, spell daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. Check out applehype.com, I've mentioned it enough times in this video even. You've gotta go check that out, see what I'm talking about. And don't forget to check out the podcast, The Daily Tech After Party, which is now a video podcast. So if you wanna get subscribed to the Clips channel, then that's gonna be linked up down below as well. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.